साथ काम भी किया हूँ लोकसभा में जैसे मैं आप सबको पहले भी बताया था हम लोग कॉलीग्स हैं सहयोगी है आ, और मैं खुश हूँ कि इस चुनाव के बाद कांग्रेस पार्टी को एक नया अध्यक्ष के लीडरशिप और के नेतृत्व और गाइडेंस से आगे बढ़ने का मौका मिलेगा मैं ये भी कहूँगा आप लोगों से कि मैं बहुत आभारी हूँ कि इतने सारे कांग्रेस कार्यकर्ताओं ने मुझे समर्थन दिए जिनमें से एक हज़ार से ज़्यादा मतदान देने वाले हमारे डेलीगेट्स भी थे और बहुत सारे जो शायद वोट देने का हक नहीं था लेकिन कांग्रेस पार्टी की भलाई के लिए काम करने वाले मुझे हर प्रदेश में आके समर्थन दिए मेरे साथ निकले और हर जगह में जैसे आप आज भी देखते हैं मेरे साथ रुक के मुझे जिस किस्म के मॉरल सपोर्ट दिए मैं इसके लिए आभारी हूँ मेरे ख्याल में हमारे कार्यकर्ता हैं हमारे पार्टी का असली गुरूर और मैं कहूँगा कि हमारे कार्यकर्ताओं के काम से ही पार्टी आगे बढ़ेगी और मैं खुश हूँ कि उनको इस इस विषय से सॉरी इस चुनाव से उनको भी एक मौका मिला हमारे पार्टी के भविष्य के बारे में सोचने के लिए और उनके ही पसीने से उनके ही काम से हमारे पार्टी का भविष्य बनने में एक बहुत भूमि बहुत बड़ा भूमिका लेना मैं चाहता हूं कि पार्टी उनकी भी आवाज़ सुने मैं चाहता हूं कि खड़गे साहब का विजय हम सब मान लें कि कांग्रेस पार्टी की जीत है मैंने शुरुआत से ही कहा था ये कोई व्यक्ति का विषय नहीं मैं मेरे लिए कुछ नहीं चाहता मैं सिर्फ चाहता हूं कि पार्टी मजबूत बने क्योंकि भारतीय मजबूती के लिए एक कांग्रेस मजबूत होना बड़ी ज़रूरी है तो इसी स्पिरिट में और इसी उद्देश्य से मैं लड़ा और जो भी इस लड़ाई में भाग लिए उनको मेरे बधाई और मेरे ऑल माई ग्रेटिट्यूड पे बताना चाहता हूं मैं उससे अभी रुकूंगा क्योंकि अगर आप लोग को प्रश्न होंगे तो शायद उसके लिए जवाब दे दूंगा लेकिन मेरे मन में ये बहुत अच्छा हुआ कांग्रेस पार्टी के लिए और यहाँ से हम आगे बढ़ के कांग्रेस को हमारे देश के आने वाले चुनावों में एक बहुत बड़ा असर पड़ेगा मेरे ख्याल में क्योंकि हमारे कार्यकर्ता भी जाग गए हैं सब लोग तैयार हैं बीजेपी के चुनौती को निपटने के लिए और मैं भी काफ़ी कॉन्फिडेंट हूं कि हमारी पार्टी आप लोगों को हमारी कामयाबी दिखाई सकेंगे देश का गुरूर शशि थरूर देश का कोई नूर शशि थरूर मिस्टर थरूर आई हैव अ क्वेश्चन या मिस्टर थरूर यू गॉट द ऑलमोस्ट थाउजेंड सेवेंटी टू वोट सो मेनी आर सेइंग द पॉलिटिकल ऑब्जर्वर्स आर सेइंग दैट यू नो दीज वोट्स रिफ्लेक्ट्स दैट देयर इज अ फीलिंग ऑफ डिसेंट विद इन द कांग्रेस कैडर बिकॉज मिस्टर खरगे वॉज सीन एज अ गांधी फैमिली कैंडिडेट एंड यू वर नॉट सीन एज अ गांधी फैमिली कैंडिडेट सो मेनी आर सींग दैट कांग्रेस ऑल्सो thousand people in the congress among the congress delegates want change and this is this is a vote for dissent like how there's a difference between the two you know i didn't pitch myself as a candidate of dissent i pitch myself as a candidate of change and change not in the ideology of the party or in the direction of the party but rather in the manner in which we do our regular work and i did feel that there was a need for opening up uh access to karyakartas in the party creating more opportunities for discussion forums implementing not only the declarations of the udaipur chintan shibir but further some of the additional ideas that i had published in the manifesto which came to me largely from our own party workers who wanted to see these changes and therefore for me i would stress that it is not so much about dissent but how we can make a good party better I believe we have the experienced leaders the strong record in governance and the convictions and values that are right for the country but what i felt there was a problem with was that there was a sense of disconnect on the part of many of our workers and that we needed to overcome that by giving them a greater sense of involvement i hope the election itself has contributed to giving them some sense of involvement 
in the party. I believe that is the case. But I think beyond this, there's much more that needs to be done. And I hope Mr. Kharge, once he has had time to assume his role fully, will look seriously at how all party workers can contribute to effective governance in the party so that we can mount an effective challenge to the BJP in the elections ahead. Yeah. Sir, uh, Mr. Roon, uh, you know, while you were campaigning as well, there were times when you raised that, you know, sometimes it seemed like that uh, Mr. Kharge was being felicitated by the PCC chiefs today. Also, there was a letter which uh, came out. Mr. Sohn uh, had also spoken about that, uh, where you said that there were some discrepancies or some violations that your uh, team had raised. Did it always feel to you that this was a one-sided, some, some are calling it a rigged election against you, so you still fought the fight because you had to? Or are you absolutely satisfied with the way this entire election has been conducted? Look, first of all, I think the leak of that letter was unfortunate, and I said so immediately. I, it's certainly not something we would have done, and we are getting some very educated guesses as to where it came from, but that's neither here nor there right now. All I wanted to say is that throughout the election, Salman, as the campaign manager, was receiving information from the field, from our party workers, and wherever there were anything that he felt needed to be brought to the attention of the election authority, it was so done. This is not the first letter that was sent. It was the last letter, but it was not the first. And I will say that what Salman was doing was his duty in alerting the election authority to any violations that had been reported to us. They would then have to inquire and judge uh, whether any action should be taken. I'm not aware that any action has resulted on any of these things, but the point is everybody has to play their role in this particular situation. That's all. We are conscious that the party has held no election for 22 years. And I don't think we can either say we are absolutely satisfied or that we have any reason to mistrust. I think the fact is that in an election of this nature, after such a long time, there are bound to be glitches, there are bound to be slip-ups, and they were. But the fact is that for us, we never doubted the good faith of the election authority or of the um, party leadership in wanting to have a free and fair opportunity for both candidates to contest. You're right, the leadership by and large stayed with Mr. Kharge. Again, that is not necessarily surprising. If you have a choice between change and continuity, and you are part of the continuity by your own rule, why would you want to change? I mean, I, I must say, I, I admire those who did come out nonetheless and support me. But I would say that that's an inevitable thing. Conversely, uh, a lot of those who signed my nomination forms, a lot of those who accompanied me, a lot of those who sat alongside me in, in press conferences at PCCs and so on, were also people of some heft in the party, either by virtue of having positions themselves. We've had MPs and, 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 and fairly senior um, MPs and former MPs alongside me. But we've also had a lot of party workers who devote hours of their days, day in and day out, in many cases for very many years. Some of them are standing here. They've devoted decades to the party without any such recognition. But they still feel that idealism, that desire to see the party succeed. And for me, sticking to the uh, election was not just stubbornness or anything like that. It was also an acknowledgement of what I owed to all those who have taken uh, so much of effort to promote my views and, and this desire. Well, the point is that Shashi Tharoor can say whatever he wishes to say at this point of time. He believed it was an unfair election. He had complained. Now, amazingly, he's saying, I don't know how that letter got leaked, etc. It's all one big joke now because nobody in their right mind thought that Tharoor stood a hair of a chance. It's surprising that he even got over a thousand votes. This was an election that was decided from the start because Malika Jun Kharge was, well, obviously not officially because we can't say that, was the chosen one. He had been predetermined to be the new Congress president. Well, no matter what I say, no matter what the political pundits say, for the first time in 24 years, the grand old party has a non-Gandhi president. Malik Arjun Kharge has secured a landslide victory of over 7,000 votes against Shashi Tharoor, who only managed 1,071, which some say is actually pretty impressive. This election for who will be the Congress's chief was nothing short of a full-fledged soap opera, thanks mostly to Shashi Tharoor and initially Ashok Gehlot. But in the end, it was veteran Malik Arjun Kharge. Eight years old, 
Gandhi loyalist, a man who's named his children after the Gandhis and who was chosen by the Gandhis, an indication that the party has stuck to what it knows and has shunned the opportunity for change. But will Karge be able to change the grand old and bring in the brand new is the multi-million dollar question for India's oldest party. An 80 year old veteran Mallika Arjun Kharge is the new Congress president. The grand old party has finally chosen its new chief after a poll process which was mocked as staged but can prove crucial for Congress revival. Congress's man of the movement is the first non Gandhi party president in 24 years. As per the Article 18D, of the Constitution of Indian National Congress, I, Madhusudan Mistri, hereby declare Sri Malika Jun Kharge elected as the President of Indian National Congress. Kharge swept the party's high stakes polls with over 90 percent votes. Challenger Shashi Tharoor emerging as a distant second. Celebrations erupted outside Kharge's house right after the news of him being the new chief broke out. Tharoor, who had made massive allegations of irregularities in the poll process, conceded defeat and wished Kharge. I am on my way to congratulate our new president. Okay. Let me go and meet him and then we'll talk. Come, thank you. I am going to see Kharge's friend. Congress veterans, including Rajasthan CM Ashok Gehloth, whose loyalists had revolted to stop his elevation as Congress chief, hailed Kharge. Kharge is a very important thing. He is a member of the MLA, two members of the member, and he is a member of the member. Sonia Gandhi Ji came to me and said, how happy he was. Because he said, I would like to make a new day for this day. So you can see that we are all very happy. It's a great responsibility and a great privilege for the family. Uh, it's not every day that you uh, uh, get to be the president of uh, the uh, oldest party in India that got us the freedom and that has built uh, India and that has uh, created this idea of India for, uh, for the entire world. So it's a great uh, honor and privilege for the family as well. He hails from a very poor background, from a very simple family, a Dalit family. And today he's uh, reached the pinnacle in the Congress party, in historic position of the Congress party president. I think with his leadership, I'm sure that we, 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 there'll be uh, good days ahead for the party. And from the middle class. While Rahul Gandhi said he will report to the new president now, many Congress netas said only Rahul Gandhi will remain the face of the party. Will you be reporting to the new president? Obviously, the Congress president is the supreme authority in the Congress party. And every Congress member reports to that person. Can Kharge shed the loyalist tag and revive Congress fortunes to take on BJP's formidable poll machinery? With Supriya Bharadwaj and Mausami Singh in Delhi, Bureau Report, India Today. Now, President Mallikarjun Kharge is the new Congress chief, but he has, well, to say it very mildly, a very tough task cut out for him. He faces very serious party challenges that he will be looked upon now to fix. Number one, boost the confidence of the party workers and leaders amidst a very flagging sort of reputation for implosions. It, he needs to stop the desertions and infighting between various factions of the party in different states. He needs to deal with dissidents like the G23 faction. They, of course, have done G Huzur and bowed to the Gandhis in this election, making a total mockery of themselves. You know, the entire G23, they even abandoned Shashi Tharoor, who was a part of them and went behind Malika Arjun Kharge, but that's a different story. But Malika Arjun Kharge has to lead organizational reforms and create a robust election battle-ready machine to counter Modi and Shah in this immediate round of assembly elections and then 2024. He has to retain the present UPA allies and bring more into the fold to become a real war-fighting political force on the road to 2024. But there is a much more immediate question for Kharge, and that's the breaking news we're bringing to you right now.
Malikarjun Kharge, remember, is from Karnataka. He's an old war horse. He's led many campaigns there. He's a multi-time MLA from the state. And his elevation to Congress presidency could be a big boost to the Congress's fight in the state of war Karnataka. He is expected. We're hearing from the ground that his victory in this election is being seen as a big boost. And he will be seen to galvanize the Congress for the 2023 elections. Just seven months from now, his home state, Karnataka, goes to the elections. And Karnataka, remember, is seen as the one big state where the Congress party has a strong fighting chance. Now, Nabila Jamal joins me live on this uh, story. Nabila, there is, of course, Gujarat and Himachal coming up soon. But Karnataka is that one state where... The Congress is seen to have a certain degree of vibrancy. It has a good chance and may actually have a positive, you know, outcome in the election. Malikarjun Kharge, someone you know well, is from the state, a state he knows very well. He knows all the people there. He knows the language. He's highly respected. He's been an MLA several times. How do you see this? Is this a big boost to the Congress in Karnataka? Well, the, the Congress in Karnataka, the many leaders that I've spoken to, Shiv, are quite upbeat and positive. That Malika Arjun Kharge, with his experience and the kind of understanding that he has of the political dimensions in Karnataka, will surely act as a binding factor over all of these, uh, you know, bickering leaders. And you know yeah. very well what I'm trying to, uh, you, you know, refer to. The DK camp, the Sidhu camp, both these factions have been boring, uh, you know, time immemorial. And it appears that Valikarjun Kharge will be, re will be rested with this responsibility to actually bring these two forces together. And right. why he's the right man and why the Congress High Command has these hopes is only because Valikarjun Kharge, uh, despite being a nine-time MLA and coming very close to being elected, uh, very close to being chosen as That's the Chief right. Minister of Karnataka, twice over. Uh, the, the last assembly elections, uh, the, the uh, elections before that, Kharge was the top contender for the CM post for yes. the Congress party in Karnataka. But he wasn't made. He wasn't made the chief minister. But yet the man never revolted. He never complained. He stayed a staunch loyalist of the Congress party. And it appears that that's what's paid him this dividend. He's been yes. elevated to the Congress president's post. And knowing that he knows Karnataka very well, decision making will be a lot easier. Uh, and, and of course, he understands Sidramia and DK Shivkumar very well. He is very well uh, they are, they are hoping see. that this man, understanding these two leaders, will be able to bring them together and also consolidate the Dalit vote in Absolutely. the state of Karnataka. Uh, but that's going to be a very, very here, big ask. Like uniting the, the factions. Here, yes. Uniting the factions in Karnataka is going to be one of the biggest challenges for Malik Arjun Kharge. We've got more breaking news. We've got more breaking news coming in. Prime Minister Modi has just tweeted conveying his best wishes to the new Congress president. Remember, Prime Minister Modi's BJP has long talked about a Congress Mukt Bharat and then a Gandhi Mukt Congress. And now that latter part has at least become something of a reality because, uh, because Sonia Gandhi and Rahul Gandhi are not the president uh, or uh, hold any official positions within the Congress structure anymore. And the Prime Minister has just congratulated Malik Arjun Kharge, the new president of the Congress party. That's the Prime Minister's tweet there, wishing him the best for the new responsibility. The outgoing president of the Congress party, Sonia Gandhi, the matriarch, the leader, continues to be the leader, when she took over the presidency of the Congress party, I was in class 12. That's how long ago it was. And over nearly a quarter century, she has led the Congress through two terms of government in the UPA and is someone who is seen to continue to be the big power center of this party. But as Sonia Gandhi hands over charge to her number one loyalist, Malika Arjun Kharge, the question now is, Sonia Gandhi, who's been at the helm of all the Congress's up and downs in recent times, the question is whether the grand old party will ever see a Gandhi or a Sonia Mukt party. But Kharge could just be a remote control person by the Gandhis.
After nearly a quarter century as Congress president, she finally gets to give way to a non-Gandhi successor. With one of her most unwavering loyalists, now the man in hot seat. Could this really be the end of the Sonia Congress? Because, let's face it, that's what it was. Taking charge in 1998, Sonia Gandhi steered her party through the turn of the millennium, through the powerful Vajpayee Sarkar, only to quietly come in strong and defeat the BJP in 2004. Then, reputedly with powerful remote control and kitchen cabinet, the Sonia Congress gave the country two terms of government under the UPA. The coalition she still heads to this day. Vacating her seat briefly for Sun Rahul in 2017, the Sonia Congress saw a second humiliating defeat in five years. Hurriedly anointed back as an interim president, Sonia helped keep a wounded, broken party together. But ever since, with Sonia Gandhi's health condition keeping her away from the daily bustle of politics, the Sonia Congress has, for all practical purposes, become the Rahul Congress. A fact the Congress denies, but one that is undeniable in the radiance of the Rahul-centered Bharat Jodo Yatra. Sonia may have vacated her chair, and Rahul may have decided he doesn't want the chair. But few believe the chair won't be at the pleasure of the Gandhis. Kharge, who named his children after the Gandhis and who has clearly stated that they remain his leaders, cannot imagine power without them. And remember, Rahul's National March is almost definitely a mission to repackage a leader. So he can perhaps be projected as a tacit prime ministerial phase for the third time. And therefore, there's no such thing as a Gandhi Mukt Congress. A new chapter, but ever in the shadow of the first family. Bureau Report, India Today. And coming up next, Pakistan's cricket board is rattled after the BCCI's sudden announcement that India will not travel to Pakistan for next year's Asia Cup. They've hit right back. We'll tell you where things stand. Everyone's busy finding what's trending. You're busy finding out why. India Today for those who research before reacting. Download the India Today app now.
Nantara and Vignesh made headlines after they announced the arrival of the twin baby boys through surrogacy. The Tamil Nadu government had then said that they will conduct an inquiry to check whether the couple violated surrogacy laws. Following the inquiry now, Nayantara and Vignesh filed an affidavit and clarified that their marriage was registered six years ago and that they have welcomed twins via surrogate, who is her relative. They also added that they registered for surrogacy in December 2021, weeks before commercial surrogacy was banned in India. The couple tied the knot at a grand ceremony on June 9, 2022 in Mahabalipuram. The two also provided their marriage certificate as a proof. And four months after their marriage, newlyweds announced the birth of their twins. Mani Ratnam's magnum opus Punyan Selvan continues to rule the box office. Yes, the period drama has now emerged as the first ever Tamil film to gross over 200 crore rupees at Tamil Nadu box office. Punyan Selvan Part 1 also surpassed Vikram to become the highest grossing regional language film in the state. Made on the budget of rupees 500 crores, Punyan Selvan has also managed to earn 460 crore rupees worldwide as per the latest reports. The multi starer narrates the ancient tale of majestic Chola Empire and is based on the book of Kalki Krishnamurti. It consists of a mega star cast including Vikram, Karthi, Jayam Ravi, Aishwarya Rai Bachchan, Trisha, Sobita Dulipala, among others. In pole-bound Gujarat, his home state, Prime Minister Modi today inaugurated a part of the big Defence Expo show where he also laid the foundation stone a little later for one of India's most important combat air force bases, very close to the India-Pak border. And in doing so, he also fired a few shots at the UPA government. Take a look at why he did that. India is all set to get an aerial firewall to shield itself from Pakistani air attacks. Once complete, the Disa Air Base, just 130 kilometers from the Indo-Pak border in North Gujarat, can intercept Pakistani jets taking off from air bases in Jacobabad, foiling any Pakistani misadventure to target Gujarat's trillion-dollar industrial complex. इसके निर्माण से गुजरात के आसपास के क्षेत्र में एयर बेसिस के बीच 355 किलोमीटर की दूरी कम हो जाएगी, जिससे हमारे लड़ाकू विमानों की ऑपरेटिंग रेंज में बढ़ोतरी होगी और लड़ाई के वक्त रिस्पांस टाइम में कमी आएगी। Laying the foundation stone of the air base today in pole-bound Gujarat's Banaskanta district, Prime Minister Narendra Modi launched a big attack on the Congress-led UPA government. Accusing it of stalling the crucial airbase for 14 long years, despite a nod by the Vajpayee government way back in 2000. Disa, antarrashtriya seema se keval 130 kilometer dur hai. Agar hamare forces, vises kar hamari vayu sena, Disa mein hogi, to hum pashimi seema par. Speaking after unveiling India's biggest defense expo, the Prime Minister said India had emerged as a big exporter of military equipment. In the past five years, our defense exports have been increased by 8 defense exports. हम दुनिया के 75 से ज्यादा देशों को रक्षा सामग्री और उपकरण एक्सपोर्ट कर रहे हैं निर्यात कर रहे हैं। 
The Prime Minister who announced the fourth list of military weapons in the import curb list summed up the defence situation by invoking India releasing cheetahs into the wild. यही देश कोई जमाना था जब कबूतर छोड़ा करता था आज चीता छोड़ने की ताकत रखता है विद मंजीत नेगी इन गांधीनगर ब्यूरो रिपोर्ट इंडिया टुडे And coming up next, one of the most shameful stories of the week: Gurmeet Ram Rahim, the convict for rape and murder of the Dera Sacha Sauda, who is out on parole thanks to some elections. He's been fettered. His blessings have been sought by two big BJP leaders in Haryana. How much more shameful can this disgusting episode get? Akshita tells you on the other side. Touch screen enables users to interact directly with the display monitor. They become a feature of everyday life at supermarket checkouts, ATM machines, on GPS devices, and most commonly with tablets and smartphones. There are two common types of touch screen technology. One is called recitative. Two transparent sheets are coated with a conducting material and separated by tiny dots called spacers. When the two layers are pressed together, they create an electrical circuit that indicates the point of contact. Uses include cash and ticket machines. The other capacitive touch technology is most commonly used in tablets and smartphones. A layer of insulating material like glass is coated with a fine grid of electrodes thinner than human hair. This is sandwiched between an outer protective glass layer and an LCD screen that displays the images. As the human body is also an electrical conductor, touching the screen with a finger results in a change in the electrostatic field indicating the point of contact. More recently smartphone manufacturers have moved towards so-called on-cell and in-cell technologies. On-cell locates the touch technology onto the outer glass whereas with in-cell the touch sensors are built into the actual display panel. Both approaches allow devices to be thinner and lighter. New applications for touch screen technology now include unlocking smartphones using a biometric fingerprint scanner. When a capacitive sensor is activated, it takes a high resolution snapshot of a fingerprint which is compared against the information stored inside the phone. If the unique characteristics in the arches, loops or whorls match the device, it will unlock. Make your media plans smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. 